Hi guys, welcome back to April After Dark. Happy New Year, new screams. I don't know how lame that sounds, but with it being 2023 and after I did my um, top 10, technically 11 um, horror movies from 2022, I knew that I could not waste any more time and get into the 2023 upcoming horror films that I know about um, and which ones I'm excited about. And that being said, I'm certainly not going to go over every single um, horror movie that's, you know, listed to be coming out this year. I'm only going to talk about the ones that I'm excited about. So there are some ones that you may think, oh, I'm, you know, she didn't mention this movie. Um, and that is because I'm not planning on seeing it or it just isn't something that I plan on watching. It doesn't seem that interesting to me or whatever other reason. So without further ado, let's get into the top movies that I am looking forward to for horror in 2023. So I know, yes, it is mid-January, and there are two movies that are currently out right now. I have not seen either of them, but they are first on my list because they did come out in January. So the first one is Megan. came out January 6th. I was actually still out of town in Florida, so I have not had a chance to go check that out and see it, but I am excited to see that movie, um, and it's about another, you know, killer type doll named Megan and she is an artificial intelligence doll which when you think about AI that is probably one of the scariest things in the future or really technically now um that it does it's scary the idea of artificial intelligence getting a mind of its own and taking us over that that's actually a very terrifying thought so um, this kind of reminds me of the 2019 version of Child's Play where the doll's name is Buddy. Um, and I know a lot of people did not like that movie. I actually liked it for what it was and that's being a, I'm saying that being a huge um, Child's Play fan of the original films. And um, you know, I liked the, the fresh take on it and it kind of reminds me of that because that doll was very much, um, an AI doll, um, you know, controlled by an app and, um, you know, the problems that come with that and the fact that he was always wanting to protect Andy at all costs. And speaking of Megan, I have to show you guys something. So she was mentioned back in the fall and really, you know, went viral on Twitter and TikTok and all over the internet um, when she was announced to be coming out in January. And there was even like this little fake or well I don't know if it's fake or not but just online feuding between her and Chucky when the Chucky season two was coming out on television back in the fall um about the doll so it's kind of funny but I have to say this um and I found this through my friend um Brittany Crabb on YouTube and she did this thing if you go onto Twitter you can find um the movie Megan on there and you can actually message her and she'll message you back and if you want to check out Brittany's videos on that I will link them um, in a card up here so um, it's really creepy I also did it myself and it's just it's 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 cool and it's kind of I, I think it's really good marketing and um, it, it's fun it's really fun marketing so and she is just you know she seems like she's your friend, but there's creepiness to her. So I'm actually really excited about that. I'm a little worried because it has been, you know, typically, and it, this is not always true, so don't quote me on this, but most of the time, uh, January is considered to be kind of the dumping grounds of horror movies that aren't that great. Um, and like I said earlier, that's not always the case, but statistically, it is that way so I was kind of surprised when it was coming out the first horror movie that was coming to theaters was Megan but um, I do plan on going to see that very soon and then that brings me to the next film which actually came out uh, this past Friday Friday the 13th and this one um, is called Skinamarink and of course when I hear that I immediately want to do the I don't know, nursery rhyme or the old song, the skin of a rinky dinky do, like I immediately get stuck in my head. 
Um, but I don't know what the rating is on it. I was trying to find that out um, and I can't find it. But um, it had, it's got a limited release in theaters um, as of last Friday, so a few days ago. And it is a low budget film and it's a Canadian experimental horror film. And the plot is this, and I have not wanted to look any further into it because I'm, I'm kind of excited about this one because it seems a little bit artsy and a little bit different. But it says two children wake up in the middle of the night to find out their father is missing. And all of the doors and windows have vanished. Um, and so I guess they go into the living room and they play games or do whatever. And it seems like there's something watching them. Um, a lot of the pictures and stills and somewhat of, you know, uh, visuals I've seen from the movie look very grainy. But um, so it's I don't know if it's kind of found footage e or what. But um, I have to say that whenever I was reading about it, it it definitely took me back to my childhood because one of my reoccurring, and I had so many reoccurring nightmares, but one of the ones that always stuck out to me that really freaked me out, even when I think about it now, I don't, I, I, I can't stand the idea. Um, I used to have this nightmare and it was one of the chairs that was in one of the first houses I lived in. I would see it and it was in the office in our old house and I would see the chair and then I would look around and there were no windows and all the doors were gone and then I would just have this major panic like what am I going to do I can't get out of here um, and and then I would wake up and be so thankful that I was waking up and that it wasn't real but when I say that that reminded when I read the synopsis of Santa Marink, um all the doors and the windows have vanished that that completely takes me back to my childhood so um, I don't want to look any more into the synopsis or any other reviews or anything. I did know that it kind of, that some glitch happened and it did accidentally get leaked onto, I think, YouTube and TikTok. So some people were able to watch it um, when it wasn't even released yet. Um, and it also is supposed to be coming to Shudder, but it says, doesn't say when. And I don't know, I, since it's in limited, you know, limited release right now, I do kind of want to go see it in the theater. But at the same time, um, since I already have Shudder, um, I might wait for that. I don't know. But I also, I'm, I'm excited about it. So that is the one that, those are the two films, Megan and Skin and Rink, that are already currently out in theaters as we speak that I have not seen, but I am excited about both of them. Okay, coming in at number three um, is a movie called Snowfalls, and this will be video on demand, so it's not going to be in the theater from what I'm understanding, um, and it is going to be released January 17th, so it'll be this coming week, um, in a few days actually, and um, I actually like the poster of this, um, I just think it looks really it's interesting. It's cool. Um, I like movies that are that happen during the winter a lot, and given that we're in January, this will be a great movie to watch. Um, and it's supposed to be about five friends who um, are getting together to celebrate New Year's Eve um, in an isolated cabin. A snowstorm comes, and then they all start to kind of lose their sense of reality, go a little bit insane. And there's something to do with the snowflakes maybe being, maybe maybe making them go crazy. I don't know. I like the premise. It's interesting. It could be terrible, but um, I love holiday horror. I like when there's a movie that is set around a holiday. I love that. So I can, you know, it just makes all the holidays a lot better. Um, so I'm excited to see this, um, and it actually is starring, I can't think of what's his name, um, Jonathan Bennett, who is from Mean Girls, which is one of my favorite movies, and he's the guy that played Aaron Samuels, so he's actually in this movie, so that's kind of an interesting fact, and I also read that Snowfalls was only shot in six days, so maybe that's why it's going video on demand, um, but Nonetheless, it seems like an interesting concept. It's a winter horror film and it's a New Year's Eve horror film. So I'm excited about that. Okay, so now we get into February and um, the first one I've, I'm hearing about that's coming out early February, February 3rd to be exact, is called Knock at the Cabin and it is an M. Night Shyamalan film. Um, I loved a lot of his early stuff, um, and this is actually going to be rated R, and it is based on a horror book from 2018, 
Paul Tremblay's um, Cabin at the End of the World. I have not read that, um, but it's supposed to be based on that. And it is um, a family. It's, uh, you know, two guys and their daughter. They go to a cabin, you know, for a vacation. And then there's supposedly four um, strangers that are armed and they come to the door and then they, um, you know, kind of home invasion-ish. And they supposedly uh, threaten them with having to make a really difficult decision with, uh, I think, I think one of them dying or, you know, the end of the world. So it's got apocalyptic stuff going on in it. And, but, but I will say the fact that it's rated R with M. Night Shyamalan, I think the last rated R movie that M. Night Shyamalan did was The Happening, which I, I did kind of like. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen that, but... Um, it'll be interesting and I am very curious about it. Um, and it's got a really, um, an all-star cast. So this, this should be interesting. So that will be coming out February 3rd. So I'm hoping that that's really good. March. And of course, I think everybody is anticipating this one. It is going to be Scream 6, which will be coming out, uh, March 10th. And this one takes them out of Woodsboro into New York City. Um, I have not actually watched the trailer. I've seen some clips of it, but I don't want to spoil anything. Um, I feel like I've kind of gone into um, a habit of not liking watching trailers completely because I feel like it does kind of ruin the movie for me. And that's not always true, um, but... I, I don't want to see a, a ton of stuff and then be expecting these certain scenes to happen. So I have not actually watched the full trailer for Scream 6. Uh, Nev Campbell will not be coming back, um, but Courtney Cox is said to be uh, coming back. And then Hayden Panettiere is coming back as Kirby, which she was in. She was a very beloved character from uh, Scream 4. So it should be interesting and... Um, also, it's supposed to be happening during Halloween, which I, like I said earlier, I'm kind of a sucker for movies that are central around a certain holiday, horror movies that are, and I'm excited about that. I love, um, I'll, I think I'm going to love the idea of, you know, there's a ghost face, uh, somebody with that mask on, and then everybody's in costume, so that should be interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that, and I think a lot of people are. Okay, so since I'm wearing my, you know, my Chucky sweater... Um, and I said earlier that I love Chucky. I do. Um, there is going to be in April, April 4th to be exact, um, a full-blown Child's Play documentary that celebrates the entire franchise directed by Kyra Elise Gardner, featuring interviews with cast and crew, including genre icons such as Lynn Shay, Alex Vincent, Jennifer Tilly, franchise creator Don Mancini, and more. Um, and this will be on Screenbox, it said, which is what Terrifier 2 was on. Um, and... I'll probably subscribe just to watch that because I love Chucky. I love Child's Play. And it says that it's going to tug at your heartstrings, so I probably will cry <laughs> if it says that. So yeah, so that is going to be a documentary. Um, I thought I would include that because I'm excited about that. Okay, continuing in April, um, I just heard about this maybe a few weeks ago or two weeks ago, but there is going to be a new um, addition to the Evil Dead franchise, and it's called Evil Dead Rise. Um, and it will be coming out April 21st of this year. And um, I have, that's another one. I have not watched the full trailer. I don't really want to because I don't, I've seen enough that I, it's, I don't want to have anything ruined for me. But instead of being in a cabin, um, like the rest of the Evil Dead movies are taking place at, this is going to be taking place in Los Angeles in a high rise apartment building. And it follows two sisters and then they're dealing with, um, you know, uh, deadites that are in the apartment. I don't know if that includes one of them or what, but um, I loved the 2013 version of um, Evil Dead, the reboot, and I also love the original Evil Dead movie a lot, and um, it's supposed to be, at least, it seems like it's going to be just as gory as the 2013 version, and um, you know it's going to be in good hands because both Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell are executive producers of this film, and they are keeping a lot of things close to the vest until April when it comes out. So I'm actually really excited about this. I love Evil Dead. So be on the lookout for that. It was initially supposed to be just, I think, HBO Max, but since it is so good or did so well with crowds, or um, it's going to be put out in the theater. So I'm excited about that.
there's another movie that I have not heard about very much, but um, when I was making my list and looking all the movies that are coming out in 2023 that are horror, um, it is called uh, The Pope's Exorcist, and this will be coming out April 6th, um, and it stars Russell Crowe, and this is supposed to be based on a real um, guy that did over over 100 exorcisms, um, and there's no, you know, actual, like, poster for it or not much else information, but it sounds interesting to me. Portrayal of a real-life father figure, Gabriel Amorth which I feel like I've seen like a documentary on Shudder, I want to say, or it was Netflix and it actually is about him or he's featured in it. Um, a priest who acted as chief exorcist of the Vatican and who performed more than, wow, I was way off on the number, more than 100,000 exorcism exorcisms in his lifetime. He passed away in 2016 at the age of 91. Amorth wrote, two memoirs, an exorcist tells his story and an exorcist more stories and details experiences battling Satan and demons that had clutched people in their evil. So, I mean, it could be a hit or a miss, but the fact that it's based on a, this real life guy, um, and I kind of have a thing about, I like, and you know, I love exorcism films. I mean, not all of them, but some of them can be so creepy. And, um, the fact that this is based on a real life person who did so many, you know, over whatever, over a hundred thousand exorcisms. I'm curious to see like how they're going to do that, especially with Russell Crowe. So that'll be interesting. So that will be, anyway, the, the last two films that I'm looking forward to for 2023 that are, have actual dates are, um, let's see, Insidious 5, which will be Fear the Dark. And it is the fifth Insidious film. And it is going to go back to the Lambert family from, um, the first two movies of Insidious. And, Patrick Wilson's actually, it's going to be his debut time um, directing the movie. So I'm excited about that. And also the original actor that played um, Dalton, the little boy, is reprising his role and he's getting dropped off at college and then his demons seem to be following him. Um, and so that'll be interesting. I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, and so that'll be coming out July 7th and... Um, yeah, I'm excited about that. <laughs> the other movie that has a date, and I know that this is not like one that the first one did really well. It's probably the least liked film in the Conjuring franchise, um, but it is The Nun 2. Um, I will definitely go see that because, and I didn't love the first one, um, but I mean, Valak the Nun is so scary, and I just hope that they can maybe make this better than the first Nun movie. Um, so I'm excited about that. That will be coming out um, September 8th. Thaisa Farmiga will be reprising her role as Sister Irene. And uh, Bonnie Ahrens will continue to play Valak, the demonic nun. So um, it's supposed to be taking place in France in 1956. So I don't know. Maybe it'll be good. We'll see. But I'm looking forward to it. Okay, and now I'm going to get into the movies that, you know, are to be determined. The first one I'm going to mention was actually supposed to be coming out this month, January, but there is no movie poster for it. Um, there's no other information about it besides, um, and the synopsis is of course why I want to see it, but, um, and I don't know if it's going to be in theaters or put on a streaming service or anything. There's, like I said, there's not much information out there, but this one is called A True Haunting, and it's actually going to be starring, um, Jamie Campbell Bauer, who plays Valak in Stranger Things, which I love Stranger Things. Um, he is going to be in the movie, and then um, it is supposedly a, based on a true story um, about an exorcism that they filmed on television back, I want to say it, let me look here. Yes, it tells a story of the first televised exorcism on NBC in 1971. It's about a couple, Ed and Marsha Becker, played by Stranger Things actor Jamie Campbell Bauer, and the boys, starlight actress Erin Moriarty, who buy a house that's haunted by the family that lived and died there. They agree to have the exorcism be televised, but while the broadcast is a success, the haunting doesn't leave with it. It only gets worse. So, um, you know, the fact that it's also based on a true story and it's Jamie Campbell Bauer and, you know, I just, I love these kind of haunting, true haunting stories. Um, 
but I don't know when that's going to be coming out. It said January 6th. That obviously didn't happen because that's come and gone now. There is no date. The next thing I saw was January 20th, but I don't know if that's even going to be that either because we still don't have a poster for it or, you know, any other information besides what I just told you guys. So nonetheless, I'm excited about that. Whenever that will be coming out, I'll be watching it. Um, and then let's see here. We have another movie that is starring somebody that I like from a TV show. It's called Cuckoo. Um, there is no date on it, but it stars Hunter Schaefer from Euphoria, one of my favorite shows. I'm obsessed with Euphoria. Um, and it's about a 17 year old girl named Gretchen. She moves to an Alpine resort after her mother's death. And what I read basically is that she's being followed by a creepy, mysterious woman sounds interesting um so there is no date on that and that's all that we know about it but i will i'll watch it just to see hunter schaefer and see how she does as a scream queen um and then of course i have to mention this since i loved x and pearl and this one i'm not sure if it's coming out this year or next year but maxine i said that last video but um obviously it stars mia goth again as the main star it takes place during the 80s um and it follows her you know after she leaves um, the first movie X and you know she's obviously going to Hollywood and she is I would assume an adult film star and I don't know much more about it um, so it'll be interesting I'm I'm really excited about it but I don't know if that'll be coming out I want to say if it does come out this year it would probably be the end of the year or it could be 2024 when we see that but uh, nonetheless I'm obviously really excited about that. It kind of goes without saying. Okay, another movie, but I don't know because I don't see a lot of information about it, but it does have a date, um, October 23rd, but that's not, you know, confirmed. And that is a movie called Hell Hell, or no, Hell Hell, Hell House LLC Part 4, and it's the Carmichael Manor Origins. Um, and I loved the very, the first Hell House LLC. Um, it's a great, it's definitely in my top five found footage films. It's a great Halloween movie. Um, I think you can watch that on Amazon Prime or Shudder, I want to say. Um, and then there were two other sequels. I did watch the second one. I liked it. The third one, I feel like I couldn't really get into it, but this one is supposed to be taking place before, um, and it's called the, supposedly the Carmichael Manor origins. I don't know if that's going to be released on Shudder. I would imagine that it would be because they have all the other films on there. Um, and that will be just in time for Halloween, hopefully. Um, I'm excited about that. I loved, I loved the original story of Hell House. Um, and then this one is supposed to be Netflix. Um, there is no date on it, but it's, um, it's called The Deliverance, and all I know is that it's based on the story of the Ammons family haunting, which, if you're not familiar with that story, it was um, the house that had so many demons. The house that Zach Bagans bought and purchased back in 2014, or maybe it was earlier than that, um, and then they did the documentary Demon House, and then he ended up tearing down the house. Um, and he's never, I mean, some of the, the, the dirt and all that are at his museum. By the way, I have a video coming. I just haven't, I, I yeah, I haven't done the video yet, clearly, or even thought about how I'm going to do this, but I need Toby to do it with me. But we did go back to the Haunted Museum for my birthday this past uh, May, and we got to investigate and sit in every single room and investigate, so... Um, I haven't, uh, this sounds crazy, but, um, I haven't even begun to wrap my head around the, some of the stuff that we caught. We did send it to, um, I'll have the, uh, save this for later on. I will have a, a, an entire video, maybe two videos because there's so much to cover, um, of my second time going to that museum, doing the RIP tour, and then also getting to investigate doing the flashlight tour, which, I mean absolutely incredible experience anyway point being is that there is a netflix movie coming out um called the deliverance and it's based on that um original story of the ammons family so i'm excited about that anything to do with true hauntings i i'm all over it the next movie that um does not have a date is called shelby oaks um and it is actually there there's no 
date on it, like I said, but Keith David's supposed to be come, like, appearing in it, and um, a YouTuber actually wrote this and got it, um, got the funding for it, like crowdfunding. So this says, it's shot as a traditional feature, but with some elements of found footage. Shelby Oaks is a horror film about missing paranormal investigators. The Paranormal Paranoids is their name. The dark legacy they uncovered and the far-reaching effects their investigation has as Mia searches for her sister Riley, the lead paranormal investigator 12 years later. As Mia uncovers new and disturbing leads related to Riley's disappearance, she uncovers evidence of a hidden supernatural evil dating all the way back to her and Riley's childhood. Okay, and then of course I'm going to have to mention um, the Exorcist. It has a date, but I don't know if that's going to stick or not. I know that there was something going on with one of the lead actors and their health, so they had to, you know, put filming on pause at some point recently. I don't know if that is changed now or whatever, but, um, and it is David, Gor David Gordon Green who did the most recent Halloween trilogy, um, you know, Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, Halloween Ends, and that's a polarizing um, trio of films. Um, I happen to be in the one that for the most part loved his vision and his directing, and I love how those movies w turned out. And I knew, I heard maybe when the second, when it was Halloween Kills that came out, I knew that he was at the helm of an Exorcist trio of films. So I am, I'm excited about it. I love The Exorcist. It's one of my all-time favorite movies, if not one of, I mean, I really can't do a ranking on my favorite movies, but it is definitely in the top five for sure. Um, I love The Exorcist. So, and um, I, I like his vision. So I'm curious how this is going to be. Um, th there's not a lot of information beyond that it's a direct sequel to the original film. Um, I guess kind of like Halloween 2018, you basically ignore the other films that were in the catalog. Um, and I know that there was a show, I did watch it, The Exorcist TV series. Oh gosh, I don't know how many years ago that was. And it was decent, um, but I'm excited about this one because they got Ellen Burstyn to reprise her role as Chris McNeil, the mother of Reagan McNeil. And this is also following another family. The, the father reaches out trying to find, I guess his daughter might be possessed, clearly. And he's trying to find some help by people that have experienced this. So I'm sure that's where Chris McNeil will come into play. Um, and then there are two other films that are be gonna be coming out after that, sort of like the Halloween war. Um, and um, I know, you know, some people are, you know, don't like exorcism films or any of that, but I, I like David Gordon Green's ways of producing and directing. So I'm curious. Um, but that's slated to come out um, October 13th of 2023. I don't know if that's going to stick or not, like I said earlier with the, you know, changes and everything. So, um, but I'm excited about that for sure. And that's all that I know of right now that I looked at that I'm actually interested in seeing. There's obviously there's other movies that did not make my list that will be coming out this year that other people are very excited about. Um, so just do your own research and find, you know, what you, what will fit your niche. These are the ones that fit mine. Anyway, that wraps this video up. Let me know um, what you think uh, of 2023 and the movies that are coming out. Any of the ones that I mentioned, are you interested in them also? Or have you heard anything different than what I've heard? Um, just let me know your top top ones that you're looking forward to. Maybe your top five that you're real excited about. Um, all right, that is it for today's video. I will see you in my next one. And as always, have a very creepy night. Bye.